welcome to Nick Grid. I know it's been a hot minute since I posted my last video. This was supposed to come out two weeks ago, but I've been kind of crazy busy with some work. So I've been a little bit delayed with my video schedule. But this tutorial, we are going to be doing a cute little carrot. It was inspired by Easter, but obviously that is passed by now. I'm hoping to get this edited tonight, so we'll be mid-April by the time this is out, hopefully. We have a little baby Luna that this could easily go with. I have a tutorial for how to make this cute little baby Luna bunny on my channel. I'll link that down below. But this carrot could easily be a cute little thing for next Easter. They could easily hold it and have it just be like a cute little prop. Super duper adorable. So let's go ahead and get started. For this project, you're going to need some yarn. In today's tutorial, we're going to be using this nice orange, I love this cotton, which is from Hobby Lobby specifically. This is a worsted weight yarn. I'm also going to be using some in orange and some in green. You can see that I've also have made some other colors because carrots don't always come in orange. Sometimes you can get a purple carrot and sometimes you can also get some yellow carrots. I'll post a little picture here so you can see. I'm not just making it up. I wanted to show how this would look for all the other colors and all the other carrots. But basically I'm going to be using this orange tone and this emerald-esque green for the green tops right here. We're also going to be using a size 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using my furls crochet hook. Links for affiliate things down below if you're interested in getting your own furls. I love these crochet hooks. They're ergonomic and they're beautiful. And this one is absolutely stunning. I am also gonna be using a darning needle a pair of sewing scissors. You can use any kind of scissors, really, as well as some polyfill. You do not need a lot. If you have a pound bag, it's more than enough to make a ton of little critters. For a pound bag, you probably have enough for a bunch of these little lunas, as well as a couple of carrots as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to pop up a little pattern right here for all that you're going to need. And we're gonna just go ahead and get started. For this, you're gonna want to be comfortable with working in the round, making rings. I do my ring a specific way. I'll show you how I do all of these things, like single crochet, increase, decrease, working through the back loop only, as well as working through the front loop only. I'll show you how I do those things, but I'm not gonna spend an insane amount of time on it. So let's go ahead and grab our orange yarn. We're gonna make our carrot part right here first we're going to basically work from the bottom up so we're essentially going to make a slip knot like so you're going to want to be comfortable with doing that and you're going to put it on your crochet hook and so for me my magic ring i never really was able to wrap my head around the normal way of doing it the normal way and the way that i do it is i work from wrapping under and I just chain two. All of my stitches, I yarn under versus yarn over. You'll notice that about my stitches, but it's fine. They all work the same. I'm just doing the X stitch version of the single crochet versus a Y stitch for my single crochet. So instead of wrapping over like that, I'm gonna wrap under. It's the same and you're just going to chain two. So we're going to skip our first chain and go into our second chain right there. And we're going to put four single crochet instead of this. This is our first round essentially. So one, two, three, and four. Now you'll notice that this is a nice big open gaping hole. That's a problem until you pull your tail and that will close it up. So now on row two, we're going to single crochet one and increase twice. We have four stitches and our goal is to get that up to six stitches. So how we do that is we're gonna do two increases because four plus two equals six. And essentially we're gonna do that across these stitches evenly. So we're going to go through the front loop only as well, just for this part. I like how this looks for my amigurumi and that's why I do it. I find that it looks a bit more bubbly. So single crochet one, and now in the next stitch, we're gonna put two and go one. And what I like to do when I'm increasing is you can just go through like normal, but for my increasing stitches, I like to go through both of the loops on the second stitch that I'm trying to go. So I already went in once through the front loop only, and I'm going to go through both of the loops for that increased stitch only. Now we're going to do that again, go through the front loop only, single crochet one, and now we're going to go through the front loop only again on our last stitch right here, trying to get it through. Apparently it decided to be really tight. There we go. 
So go through the front loop only for your first stitch of your increase. And we're going to go through our second stitch, both of them for that time. So now you'll notice that it kind of wants to try to flip outside on itself. Try to force it so that your outside stitches are facing outward, obviously. So now we're on row three. We have six stitches on our work. And if you want to use a stitch marker, you can. I tend to use my tail, but I tend to wait for a couple rows before I start implementing that. So we're going to single crochet one and increase again. We have six stitches and now we're going to do that single crochet one increase times three. So single crochet one increase, single crochet one increase, and single crochet one increase. We're going from six stitches up to nine. So this might be a bit more obvious how I'm doing my increases during the third row. So single crochet one, go into the next stitch through the front loops only. And then for your increase, go through that exact same stitch, but through both loops this time. This has a tendency to make it look a bit more, uh, less like there's holes in it, essentially. It hides any kind of gaps you may have between your stitches, essentially. So again, single crochet one and increase. So this is your stitch. Go inside once, then go through both loops twice single crochet one and this should be the last one single crochet one through the front loop and then go through both and add your increase so now we should have nine stitches one two three four five six seven eight and nine what i like to do here is i'm going to take my tail and i'm going to put my hook through the center of my last stitch that i just made take my tail and i'm going to pull that through to show it as a stitch marker essentially so round four we're just going to maintain our stitches we're just going to single crochet around all nine of these stitches and that's essentially what we're going to be doing for this entire carrot if you can see what the pattern says from here on out we're essentially going to be doing our increase which is what we did on our round three and then round four, we're going to maintain whatever we created during the previous round. So we have nine increased to here. So we're going to single crochet around for nine. Then we're going to increase up to 12. And then we're going to single crochet around for 12. Increase up to 15. Single crochet around for 15. Until we get to 24 stitches, essentially. We're going to do that all the way up. And then I'll show you how we go around for that. So I'll just keep showing you. So one, two three, four, we're on round four now, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I like to take my tail and grab it from the inside, hopefully. Pull that out, try not to split it, and then pull it through. And essentially what we're doing is we're increasing three stitches every other round so that it creates this triangular shape. When you're doing only three increases, you only have three points that it's coming out from. Instead of, say, if you were to do like your Luna head, you have six. That makes more of a round shape versus if you just do three, it creates a triangle because you only have three points that are coming outward. So that's creating the three sides of the triangle essentially is what you're doing. So now we're on round five. And I like to do something called staggering my increases. So on my even rows, so the rows that I have an even number of stitches between my increases, I like to split it up. That way my increases don't all line up and you won't end up with a line going down it. Those look obnoxious to me. Like say here with the Luna head, this one actually has a line going down. You always see if you line up all of your increases, I have a whole video on this of staggering versus um, stacking. This is called stacking when you have them all stacked up on top of each other. I like to stagger mine so that they don't do that. It hides the increases a little bit better. So this is what I mean by this. So here we're going to go up to 12 stitches. And if you're only going to do that across three times, you're going to essentially single crochet uh, two and then increase. So instead of doing that, we're going to single crochet one and increase and then single crochet one. That way it's split up. So again, single crochet one. We'll do that again. Single crochet one, increase. I got some polyfill in my yarn right there. Oh, come on. And increase, uh, I already increased and single crochet one. 
So here we go. We have an increase here and we have an increase here. And there's still two single crochets between our increases. They're just split up so that that increase doesn't line up with our increase from over here. It looks better. I like how it looks and I go, I'm going to do that for the rest of this video. If you're frustrated and you don't want to stagger, you're free to also just keep doing that. So we're going to increase here. And single crochet. So now we're going to move along our tail. Move that along. And now we have 12 stitches that we need to single crochet around four. We are now on round six and we have 12 stitches that we just need to maintain. So one, try to not split my yarn, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Move our tail forward. We are now on round seven, and we're going to single crochet three and increase. We're going to be going from twelve stitches up to fifteen. And essentially, because there's an odd number between them, you don't split or stagger. This is just single crochet. One, two, three. And on this fourth stitch, we're going to make an increase. So four and then an increase stitch. One, two, three. And increase the stitch going through both loops. Again, if you're frustrated by doing it that way, you're free to increase however you would like to increase. I just wanted to show some alternate ways in case you are having those issues with gapping or you just can't understand why your uh, increases don't look quite as invisible as you'd like, essentially. So that was an increase. We're going to take our tail and move it forward. And now we are on row eight and we're going to single crochet around for those 15 stitches. So one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 and 15. We're going to move our tail forward and from now on I'm actually just going to do a little fast forward for the just single crochet around rounds. So our even rounds essentially. I'm just going to do a little fast forward and tell you what number of stitches we should have at the end of it. So now we're on nine and we're going to stagger our increases again. So we just did single crochet three on the previous round before the last. We did single crochet three increase so now we would essentially want to single crochet four and increase. So I'm going to take that, split it in half, single crochet two, increase, single crochet two. That way our increases do not line up and it's nice and hidden. So one, two, and increase. And one, two. Let's do that again. One, two, increase same stitch and one two this way there's still four stitches between each of our increases it looks better that way in my opinion so one two at least for my style of crocheting increase and one two we are now going to move our tail forward and on row 10, we're going to single crochet around. We should have 18 stitches that we just increased from row nine. I'm going to single crochet around real quick and then we'll go to row 11 and I'll show you how I do that. We're moving along our tail again. We are now on row 11 
and what we're going to want to do is single crochet five and then increase we're going to be going from 18 stitches up to 21 so one two three oh don't split four and five then increase three times so that's one now one two three four five and then on our sixth stitch we're going to increase and one two three four five and increase and now we have 21 stitches and we're going to for round 12 just to single crochet around after I move my tail forward and now I move my tail again and we're on round 13 we're gonna be going from 21 up to 24 and we're gonna stagger again so because the last one we did single crochet 5 and increase we would have single crochet 6 and increase but I'm gonna single crochet 3 increase single crochet 3 you can do it however you'd like again I just like how this looks a lot better so one two three and increase going through both one two three one two three increase one two three one two three increase one two three one and the final one two three final repetition anyway increase go through both there we go and one two three we're gonna grab our tail move that along maybe there we go found it and now we're going to single crochet around for our final time and this is row 14 we're going to single crochet around for all 24 of these stitches and i'm going to fast forward again all right so that's the final stitch of that row i'm actually gonna fix that there we go we're gonna take our tail and again move it forward nice and forward we're then going to for row 15. we've essentially just been working through the front loop only so we've got the two loops here we've been going through essentially just this loop so instead of that for this round we're gonna go through the back loop only and we're gonna let that front loop lay and create this nice line along the ridge which I like a lot if you don't like that you don't have to but I feel like it gives a separation of space between the top of the carrot and the bottom of the carrot and I like how that looks so I'm going to do that and essentially we're going to start doing our decreasing to help close off the top of our carrot lid and instead of doing a uh decrease every three stitches we're essentially going to do it every six stitches for rows 15 16 and 17. we're at 24 stitches and our goal for 15 is to get down to 18 and then go down to 12 the next round and go down to six so we're going to go through the back loop only and we're going to single crochet one and decrease you can do a decrease one of two ways you could if you're frustrated by going through the back loop only you could just skip one stitch and go through the next one I might end up doing that but you could also take your crochet hook go through both of the loops through the back loop only try to pull some yarn through that which can be difficult pull it through and then we're going to single crochet one so essentially we're single crocheting one decreasing single crocheting one six times across the entirety of row 15. so single crochet one i'm going to put my hook through both of these loops through the back loop only 
making it a nice headache for myself, but I think it looks nicer technically. A little less of a gap when you put both of them together. It's a nice invisible decrease that way. Put that together and then single crochet one, and we're gonna do this the entire way around. So single crochet one, go through both loops, trying not to split it. There we go. Like so. Single crochet one. And don't worry, for the rest of this, we're going to go through front loop only. It's just for this one round to create this nice ridge here. Single crochet one. Go through both. Very slowly. <laughs> Single crochet one. Single crochet one. Go through both. single crochet one and this should be our final round so one go through both ah, not splitting there we go again if you get frustrated by that you can just skip the stitch instead of single crocheting them together and single crochet one i'm gonna leave my tail where it is right now because i'm fairly close to the end game and what i'm gonna do here is we're at the point where i would like to stuff so I like to make a very nice firm tip. And the way that I do that is I take a little bit of fluff, like so, and I'm gonna put it on the very tip to give it some point so that it can actually stay the way that I want it to. And then from there on, I just kind of start stuffing and I very slowly put it where I want it essentially. <laughs> I'm not always the best at describing at how I like to stuff. This one is a little bit wonky when it comes to stuffing. It's easier to do it with a smaller amount of fluff if you can try to pack it that way. It looks better and trying to also square it out essentially or triangle it out in this instance trying to do that with it the entire time. I'm going to need to go get some more fluff and then I'm probably going to do that off camera, get it to the point where I'm happy with it and I'll be right back. All right, so we've reached the tricky part of the top. And what I mean by tricky is it's not that complicated. I just have a hard time with stuffing when it comes to stuffing and then also uh, showing what I need to do for the top of the carrot. So for now, we're on round 16. I'm going to try to get the fluff out from the sides. There we go. We're going to go back to going through front loop only. And what we're going to do here is we're going to single crochet one and then decrease. And I'll show you how I decrease. So I single crochet one right there. And then I decrease the same way, but this time I'm going through front loop only when it comes to that. So I go through both of those loops and then I single crochet them together as if they are one stitch. It's essentially what I did before, but I'm only going through the front loop only now. So single crochet one. And again, if anybody ever gets frustrated, I do have a printable PDF for this uh, down below on Ravelry. I also have it on Kindle and a bunch of other places, so get the links for that down below. So single crochet one and decrease. And what I like to do is I like to stuff as I go along. So I'm probably going to stuff as soon as I get down to the 12 stitches. So single crochet one and decrease. We're going from 18 stitches down to 12. I'm definitely going to need to stuff more. So single crochet one. We have two more decreases at this round. And decrease. Single crochet one. And decrease. We're going to pull our yarn a little bit, play with that, pull our tail out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get it so that this can actually work. We're going to shove a bunch in and I'm just going to keep going. And then I'll be right back as soon as I'm ready to do round 17. As soon as this is the shape that I want it to be. I kind of got to play with that a lot in order to get it to be the shape that I want it to be. So I am terrible at stuffing. I will be the first one to admit that. And I'm no good at showing other people how to stuff. I just kind of wing it and undo it 5 million times until I'm happy with it essentially is what I wind up doing. I hate stuffing and I don't know why I can't wrap my stupid little brain all around stuffing. I just am not good at it. So I'm not good at stuffing amigurumi and I'm just terrible at it. So if anybody has any tips and tricks, I've seen some people give me some comments that are very sweet and I do appreciate the feedback. Some people say that I need to not roll it up like I do and just let it go in fluffy, but then I wind up with just lumpy, lumpy amigurumi and I just hate how that looks too so I don't 
I don't know. I do appreciate the comments, and I will try anything that I have not tried before. But sometimes these things just don't work for me. I think I actually only need a little bit more, and then I should be able to do the final round. Round 17. So actually, I'm pretty happy with that. I kind of just keep squishing it until it is what I want it to be. Yeah, we're going to do it just a tad bit more here on the side, right there. All right, I'm happy with that. That's going to be what it is. And we're going to pull that down a little bit. And now we're just going to decrease until we're down to six stitches. So we're at 12 right now. And we're just going to decrease six times until we're down to uh, six, essentially. And then I'll show you how we finish off our final six stitches. I can get on camera. There we go. One, two, these two together. That's a third decrease. One, two, fourth decrease. I'm pretty happy with that. That's kind of a hole. Mm, we're gonna do this. We have two more decreases to go, but the hole still technically slightly open. So I'm going to do this where I kind of wiggle it underneath the sides of my stitches. There we go. I am, I am mostly satisfied with that. There we go. So now we have two more decreases. So one and two, and then one and two. Put those two together, pull that like that, take our tail. I'm going to leave a nice decently long tail essentially we're gonna pull that like through I'm just gonna take care of my tail over here the one that I've been using with stitch marker because it's so far away from its original and it's through all that stuffing I just cut it and then I let it kind of squish back into itself essentially put that into my tail end pile I, no yarn is wasted I use it as stuffing later on for my pumpkins a lot of the time or other things like that so here's what we're going to do. We have six stitches left and we have this giant hole just in the center of our work. What do we do to fix that? I go through from the front towards the center of each stitch and then I pull it through. Go to the next stitch, go from the front to the center, and I do that for all six of these. Four, five, and then the final stitch, six. I'm going through the, again the front loop only. So before I do anything, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to push it through the side and away, across adjacent from where the last one went through. Pull that and then you pull it and it comes all nice and tight. You can't even see it. It's beautiful. I love it. And then I'm just going to take my yarn and I didn't need to make it this long, but I did. I'm going to put it and I'm going to go through another direction away from where it was. The further away it is, I'm going to do that again, the further away it is, the less likely it is to come undone later on. So I always try to re-angle it and redo all that kind of stuff. So now we're going to work on the top of the salad greens, essentially, if I can find my green yarn and cut all of this. So we're working on the greenery of our little carrot. Be right back. Okay, so I found my emerald green yarn, and now it didn't go far. And now we're going to work on the greens. So here, I like to leave a nice long tail. This is for sewing later. So I'm going to leave a good uh, eight inches just kind of hanging out here, and I'm going to create my slip knot. We're going to make a ring, and we're going to place six single crochet inside of it for this one. This is just round one of our greens. So chain one, chain two. This is our ring, and we're going to go back inside our first single chain right here and we're going to single crochet six inside of it so one two three four keep it nice and loose oh five and six nice and loose and then we're going to take our tail and pull it so that it's all nice and tight so this is the base and essentially what we're going to do is that's our six right there and we're going to eventually go out from that so how i do that is we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet that we made so the first stitch of technically round one i'm going to go in to both stitches like so and i'm going to slip stitch ah right into it and when i slip stitch i'm now going to keep it nice and loose right there and we're going to chain 13 so one two three 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. We're going to skip that thirteenth stitch and we're going to go into the twelfth stitch essentially. And we're going to start by putting two single crochet inside each of these chains. So one, go back inside twelve, two. And now we're on the eleventh chain. One, go back inside 11, two. And we're gonna do this the entire way around. So one, go back inside two. And essentially what we're doing is we're overpacking these chains with too many stitches. It doesn't know where to go. So essentially what it does is it just kind of curls in on itself. It knows where to go, it's just too much. So we're just gonna start curling our little chains here as much as we can and that's what creates that effect essentially we're going to do this three times slip stitch chain and then slip stitch again so that's essentially what we're doing the entire way around and this all curls in on itself i'm going to fast forward through these last couple of chains Now, this is our last chain. We're going to do two again inside the final one, and then we're going to slip stitch into our middle stitch right here. So this is a repetition three times. I'm gonna try to hold that a little bit. And essentially, we're going to do that again just two more times to create the other two slots there. So that was slip stitch, chain 13, and then slip stitch. Now we're gonna go into the next stitch and slip stitch again. And then we're going to chain one, keep it nice and loose. I'm gonna undo that actually. And we're gonna repeat. So chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Skip number thirteen, and we're just gonna keep going down. I'm gonna fast forward through this where I put two single crochet inside each of these as I go. The big thing I will say is make sure that your chains are facing the correct way because if you twist it up it will affect how your uh, little pieces here will look. If you say did this and then kept trying to go in it's a not going to look right and b not going to feel right either. It's going to be a little bit more complicated and harder for you to get into your stitches so try to keep your chaining as straight as you can. It looks a lot better. We're on the last stitch right here, the last chain. We're gonna place two single crochet inside that as well. We're gonna go into our next piece and we're going to slip stitch. And then we're going to go into the next one and repeat. So slip stitch, chain 13, one, two, three, four. Oh, I split that. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Skip thirteen and place two single crochet. And I'm probably just gonna pop off camera real quick for this or fast forward. We're on the last stitch again, and now I'm gonna get all this fluff out of it. It likes to get in the way. We're going to then slip stitch into our last single crochet piece here, like that. It makes it nice and easy. There's a nice and good amount of space. We're gonna actually leave a nice long tail. Essentially, we're just making these little chains, and I'm going to pull that through like so, and we're going to sew that along the top. What I like to do in order to sew this is we're going to take our darning needle with our original tail right here, and what I like to do is actually just take that and go through the center because that's essentially where it is and how it lines up with our work there. So I'm going to take that and just stab them through the center. Ah! And balance my camera for good luck. There's always got to be one. And now we're going to hold that and pull it through like so. 
There we go. So that gives you a little bit of a cement spot where you can uh, have it just kind of sit there. And I'm going to let that just sit there for right now. And we're going to take our darning needle and we're going to just kind of stab it into the sides. So I'm going to take here, go into my carrot like so, and then I'm going to go through the front loop of my second piece here and just kind of get them to attach essentially. We're then going to take this and go underneath like so. You could hot glue this if you really wanted to. I would probably do that in the future, but I'm being lazy right now. I'm not going to get my hot glue gun out. Usually it's my lazy option. And then I'm going to go through the center over here and just attach it. That way it's just going to stick and you don't have to think about it. I probably would just hot glue this actually now that I'm thinking about it. I should have done that. It would look probably just a tad bit better. And now we're going to do that through that side right there and just try to get it attached. That way it's just like that and you don't have to think about it. So now I'm going to take my darning needle and shove it through the side over here. And that is it. That is your carrot. He is done. Again, there's a PDF printable for this if you uh, would like it down in the description, down in the doobly doo down below. I'm going to put this at a different angle right there. I'm pretty excited with how this turned out. It looks wicked cute. And I'm pretty happy with how he turned out. I'm going to cut my tails, but essentially that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like for this video. It does help out the channel immensely. There is also a subscribe button if you're interested in subscribing to our channel for more content like this. I try to post once a week, but uh, it has been a little bit sparse since I started working a little bit, so I'm trying to be better about that. Thank you for watching this video, and before we go, I would like to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. I, uh, adore every single one of you. If you're interested in supporting our channel, go to patreon.com slash knit and you can see different rewards that we offer our patrons there, free patterns, early access to tutorials, and more. Thanks again for watching. Uh, do all the, you know, general YouTuber-y kind of things and uh, until next time, guys. Bye!